There's this underworld of criminals. They take advantage of people. They kill people. Best analogy for American artists is the Marines, in that you do not question the commander above you, and the hierarchy is everything. <laughs> During our time period, which is 1999 into 2000, we go a lot deeper in the ways Yakuza culture was developing in terms of resorting to guns, in terms of cops finally cracking down. Deputy Superintendent Nagata from the National Police Force has come in with new ideas on how to defeat the Yakuza. The Hishinuma raid in episode three really is our first big set piece. And we folded in the stunt coordinator and started working with Miki Maya. She was just so fluid and fast, it was remarkable. Because of the government crackdown, the Yakuza Gumi had to shapeshift and insinuate themselves more into legitimate businesses. I wanted Tazao and his men to look like Goldman Sachs bankers with guns because they are changing the rules of the Yakuza. We specifically had Ashida with his back towards the long hallway so that we could have Tozawa looming in the background coming and then reveal him standing over Ashida. And that Yakuza summit on the rooftop is when you finally figure out what Tozawa's been up to. It was all a trap. The real iconic moment for me was when all the Oyebuns are excused and you have the whole city in the background, the two bosses, who's going to be the king of Tokyo. A war is coming, a Yakuza war. Guns are anathema from a moral standpoint for the Yakuza, but finally Ashida's like, yeah, we need guns. We went to Nagano, we went up into the mountains in the snow. We would finally be able to get outside of Tokyo and open up the scope of the show a little bit. Just the scenery is really refreshing to see after shooting so many days in Tokyo. We took time finding the right location for them walking in the woods. And then we found a really nice location with a tunnel that really works for the scene. And then the other thing that was really important was trying to ground that whole sequence in Sato, seeing it through his eyes as Sato starts to realize that Hayama is a real problem. <laughs> There's a lot of death in this season. The midpoint of season two is an assassination attempt on Ashita in Samantha's club. We shot it across three days. It was very carefully storyboarded, very carefully planned. We shot it quite slowly which is the best way, I think, to capture those intimate character moments inside of some big action sequence. There were a number of gun battles that erupted, more in the early 90s than in the late 90s, so we're sliding the timeline a little bit. One of the challenges was how much we should do on set and how much we should do on post. Some scenes we did with scripts, and then the other parts we did with a blue screen. It's a balance between being efficient and effective. ハネを詰める as far as how he dies, that was all on Ashun-san. He had a very specific idea of how he wants to fight against those gunmen. Especially for actors who play Yakuza, it's a great honor to have a good death. I want our audience to grieve and be shocked when people pass. <laughs> and we all know it's Tozawa, but of course he's left no fingerprints. すごい衝撃は受けるんだけど、その半分で嬉しいっていう気持ちもあったと思うんですよ。
He immediately understands that Sato is beloved within the Jiharakai and therefore sets out to make him his enemy. Kaito is a character that is very difficult for him to be able 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 to be ただハードルはやっぱ今まででも一番高いかなと思います。Terrible actions have a moral price. If people don't die, the price of people's actions isn't clear. This is only the first step in what every Kozawa is planning. 